Christmas songs, and that's one of them. That's what's here. Ouch. All right, rather than move the mic, I'll move me. We're back. And um, for our second half here, and who is, I just said the person's name, but now I'm up here and I'm forgetting everything. My brain falls to my feet. Andrew. Andrew is the newbie to the house. Please give this, oh no, you're not the newbie. The other guy's newbie. Give him a nice round of applause anyway. Give him up there. What would I have done when you applause up there? How do you get that out of All right. Thank you. Happiness is a new poet. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's a private view. All right, there we go. And let me just zoom in on you here so we can see every part of your pee piles. There we go. There we go, looking good. I will. Sometimes I wake up in the night. At times, my night awakens in the day. How my day is going has left me. Walking to and not from. Gone, gone. Up caught on the hook I came from. Off fishing for my own death. As to see a fish swim an entire sea in one moment. To become aligned with destiny. Always faith. to your door. When I appear in sound, in womb, found is something I put you on, and something I put you in. A float together. Who's steering? Where's Noah? Do we need gas? You're yelling. Speak to you. But I won't listen. Sure, with each ripple of its own entity to assure utmost messages conveyed through sounds, uh, uh, utmost messages conveyed through sounds, airwaves of frequency, appraisals and journeys, views and perception, intuitive travels through blind roots of adolescence, society stigmas, roots of trending egotistical congestion, clearing of the mind, body, and soul for open perception in travels that consist of higher, realm, of higher dimensions, realms of connection that fall tinted over eyes that aren't aware of visual comprehension, creating unjust, untrust, self-inflicted internal neglection, energy protrudes negatively through subconscious incorrections, living life as you've seen through entertainment projections, the clotting of glands, calcifying of minds, the many false facades of only one undefined, the one which is to be said of but not through definition, the limits of impossibilities, driven us to fear and through hell and physicality and mental capacity. The sheer disbelief of who draw the line, but none on the line are worthy. Against the grain, pedestals that lead non-believers non -believers to believe in shame. Burning yourself in the mirror, conscious collateral. Battles with the genes through third gene pool analogy. And second astral searching will, will we peak for higher learning? Thriving, thriving for a higher purpose till our true light within surfaces. This is the lighthouse. The lighthouse which we all possess, but to be possessed by, we can buy them in these states of mind, will only drive us under with time, not a relevant significance or of life. Thank you. That was Andrew. All right. Uh, next is Anthony J., who I understand who, is new. Who is new, so let's let's see it out. Right now, right now. my theory because otherwise people and I got to arrange this so that you're, you're framed uh, perfectly with your intelligence see like see now you can see how, well no 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 I, I can I can scoot this thing around believe me uh, there we wait a minute there we go there you look, you look yeah, you're framed pretty well right, uh, I don't mean to use that word <laughs> I'm just joking this is a this is a kind of crazy time for me. My brother, my sister, they're out here with me. They uh, brought me from crazy uh, depression type stuff. I don't want to get into it too much, but this is me relieving that stress. 
Okay, you just get really close to the mic, so yeah. you gotta get almost right on it, yeah. Let me take this moment to thank my unborn daughter, or, let me start over, I'm sorry. Right. Let me take this moment to thank my unborn son or daughter for the scorn. I ruled this cigarette flame bleeding away my health to a point where wealth can affect. This, sh this shower head lowered, water crosses my brow, and I'll set the scenery. California sky, for those who've never been, on a neglecting the wind. Best believe I sought the devil. When toe to toe, hammer to the anvil, class warfare, the invisible battle, left me rattled, hidden, hidden in my first castle. No funds can unshackle what I know from the master. Placid and wild, but also calm with many regrets. To the skeptics, restless. I don't claim to be what I'm not. On sight, I fought the good fight, I know. Stop the killing fields, handicap the gates. Fate, bon fate owned by hate, don't mess with me. Single black male who fell today only your eyes because I didn't stop the ill to the beat. Hail to me. I'm so free from this heat, the cold can't get a hold of me. Ghost is period. Get on this ferry or be lost to the cases that fill these streets. Oh shit, oh blissful, oh blissful peace of mind, third eye blind of the fakes. Open to the stakes where my path is on. I want you, I want all of you to step up. Don't let up. Up Chuck or flex and buck to this beat. Buck whatever you know of me because you really don't. Fingers twist high and fly higher so the king can touch. My daughter's death skills double better than my dance, I wonder. Fast life on sight, I'll bash it in you. Mad right, my hearing is tight like a fox. Funny is coming to get you. Hear me now or hear me later, it's going to get you. I'm not done yet. I stayed away from the pen thinking life was had better options, but, I'm, but I never thought my caution crippled this. King soul, these knows, for C, black, for C, blessed black owns. I'm here with you. Come here, little man, don't fret. I understand your regrets, but you gotta take that first step by step, bystander, take that hip hop shit to another land. Crash land, do the spirit, provide me, do the mic. You got it, bro, let them know. They won't forget you. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. That's the one thing. It's like, you know, why, why, if you can't, why hold back? If you can't say it here. Yeah. No? <laughs> you know, I love that. I love that. Thank you. All right. So now we have our, our mini feature of the evening. Uh, Mr. Hal Robbins, Dr. Hal, who's doing something special for us. And then we got Garrett and Greg as our closers, so we're getting close to that moment of truth where I'll take these wonderful door prizes and distribute them uh, as, as things may be uh, done. Well, I'm sure we all look forward to that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be uh, taking a trip for the next uh, five weeks, and I'm not going to be back until after August 9th, but um, I was asked last time by Edward if I would say this poem, so I'm, I'm going to do it. Uh, Ulysses by Tennyson. It little profits that an idle king by this still hearth, among these barren crags matched with an aged wife, I meet and dole unequal laws unto a savage race that hoard and store and sleep and know not me. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly, have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone on shore, and when through scudding drifts the rainy Hyades vexed the dim sea. I am become a name for always roaming with a hungry heart. Much have I seen and known, cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments, myself not least, but honored of them all, and drunk delight of battle with my peers, far on the ringing plains of windy Troy. I am a part of all that I have met, and all experience is an arch, wherethrough 
gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever as I move. How dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in youth, as though to breathe were life. Life piled on life were all too little, and if one little to me remains, yet every hour is saved from that eternal silence, a bringer of new things, and vile it were for some three sons to hoard and store myself, and this gray spirit burning in desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bounds of human thought. This is my son, my known Telemachus, to whom I leave the scepter and the isle, well loved of me, discerning to fulfill this labor by slow prudence to make mild a rugged people and through soft degrees subdue them to the useful and the good. Most blameless is he, centered in the sphere of common duties, decent not to fail in offices of tenderness and pay meet adoration to my household gods when I am gone. He works his work, I mine. There lies the port, the vessel puffs her sail, there gloom the dark, broad seas. My mariners, souls that have toiled and wrought and sought with me, that ever with a frolic welcome took the thunder and the sunshine and opposed free hearts, free foreheads, you and I, are old. Old age hath yet his honor and his toil. Death closes all. Yet something ere the end, some work of noble note may yet be done, not unbecoming men who strove with gods. The lights begin to twinkle from the rocks. The long day wanes. The slow moon climbs. The deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off, and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrow, for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the bath of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs shall wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles, whom we knew, though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved heaven and earth, that which we are, we are, one equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Thank you. Dr. Howe. And um, handing in the attribution sheet so that I can make sure that I don't always say Charge of the Light Brigade by Charles Hawtrey on the cafe. No. Now next, great, we have Garrett Murphy. Garrett yes. Murphy, you're next. And then we got Greg and Karen. Yes. Well, we just walked in, so give a round for Garrett, one of our uh, dearest and favorite poets here. He's always spot on. Another one who's subtle. He's subtle. It's like you think he's soft-spoken, and he is, but that doesn't mean what he says is soft. Deals it out as it needs to be dealt. There we go. My idea for a new kind of TV show. <laughs> oh, good. While I was seated at home one day, I got an idea for a new type of TV show. The storyline as follows. The media of such and such a country has been taken over by one called our fit brother. It saturates a populace with unquestioning reference towards authority large and small under the guise of heartwarming family values. 
In this such and such a country, <clears throat> the school yard bully, for example, has become the virtuous hero of the dramas, the comedies, the court shows, the news, and even of all three branches of government. And the populace is completely enervated. They have learned to enjoy seeing humiliation, even their own on a daily basis. Shoddy matches are the tonic of the day. No warm and fuzzy with the school children here. Whippings, beatings, slams on the walls, and tests, tests, and more and more tests when the day here. Police ride roughshod over those who are different, be it by race, nationality, religion, or some other immutable, and are subject to medals, promotions, and veneration, especially if they overreact and kill or maim. Why the country's own caretakers, the schoolyard bully, come to extend its skills, learn on the playground, and extend it to the city, county, state, and nation, to the rest of the world, simply because he can. Now, of course, there must be a few opposed to all of this, but they shall not win. These, you see, are the new bad guys who are traitors to this such and such a country, and bad guys never win. All have learned to love the perpetrator and to hell with the victims. How's that for a new type of TV show? I sent the idea to the producers of the programming, surely they didn't see the numbers multiplying in their heads. A few weeks passed before I heard from them. Finally, the response from them came in the form of an envelope, and I got the shock of my life as I read. <coughs> Dear sir, we regret to inform you that we have rejected your proposal for lack of originality. We suggest you develop an imagination, or perhaps become a journalist. For your work, you see, as written as his, is nothing more than a simple diary of a very routine day. Academy. Wow. Congratulations to all you recruits. With the passage of our secret requirement, you have officially fulfilled all the tests for being able to call yourselves officers of the law. Let the outside world believe that what we mean by the special elite, that we mean toughening one's mind and body via basic training, or being proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat, or being a cracker shot imaginable, it is really none of those things. Nor is it familiarity with police jargon or military jargon or how well you can handle or numerous sites of armament, or even knowing your badge or serial number. The most uncanny and savvy among you manage to figure it out, it happens to be how well you can tell a tall tale, one that moves our allies in court and politics to believe you when you can tell how the target reached for your gun, or tried to assault you, or tried to threaten you and others, and you can now tell a most compelling story using that specially bred imagination. That rookie is what really makes a good law enforcer. You have passed with flying colors, and I am very proud of all of you. But just keep this in mind, officers. Real colors do not fly as gloriously as the ones you have just passed with. <laughs> the Sinking Tower of Rhymes with Crisco. Like present day imitators of Yudo the Turtle, the city parents and developers did it this time. All they really had to do was to simply build a new transit center, but of course, who do we think we are? Anyone can build a simple transit center, but we're SNF, the city that really knows how. There's nothing, no nothing going higher than we. We'll build us a transit center capped by a building that'll really help to build us up to the stars. So they build up and build up and build some more, and behold, that tower was built a far from all the ages. But what's that odd sound, that sinking sound, not quite the burpy sound of a Mac, but equally ominous? A gasp grows out and it's plainly clear that that tower is beginning to sink like paralysis into the earth. Those developers might have dared to rise to the star, but it appears they may really sink to the fallen stars. They really should have known that the build up on sand, soft enough to go through our glasses, sole source of healers and city leaders and builders. But you can never keep a big eagle down for long. Hey, look on the bright side. At least we've done Italy a few better. They just have a leaning tower of pizza, but we, we have, ladies and gentlemen, the sinking tower of, oh, uh, well, you know. <laughs> Love that one. Dad Murphy. All right. And now Greg Bond. Who, uh, then we have Karen, uh, after that we have Karen, the clinching clothes of Super Duper Bulldozer, but Greg, Greg Pond, a wonderful line to see, comes up here. Another one of our great... We call him great because he is, so, you know. Oh, hold on, let me frame you perfectly there. There you go. Everybody. Okay, um, You're set. this Sunday is um, 
Pride Day, and it's also the anniversary of when I lost my lover. So I'd like to read this, um, which I read before, it's entitled Lover Diary. My good lover died a good and not so good while ago, leaving me behind with a whiff of night jasmine, forever coloring the air, its rich fragrance floating past but remaining somewhat sad, lingering along the tips of fingers, the missing pages of sleepless dreams and memories beyond words or thought, to where the scent still reminds me of all the things I've lost and no longer am able to find. Mm. All right. And that's from your book. And that's from his book. And this was mine. Um, but um, it's summertime, right? Some summertime. It's summertime, but we ain't living so easy. Hmm. We're stuck on the side where the hot sun grinds and the winds blow slow and barely breezy. Catch some fish jumping, cotton picking, high at night. Daddy Rich didn't marry Mama good looking, so hush, little baby. No one cares if you cry. Some old southern mornings, Massa's whip was a swinging. It clipped your wings, left cuts and stings, made sure you didn't ever fly again. But then came that dawn, and no one came to calm you when you were told Daddy and Mammy got sold late last night. In another summertime, we'll be singing of freedom, wishing for something we can never buy. But while we're moaning about something no one can give us, there's a noose or a prison cell waiting too close by. It's summertime, but we ain't living so easy. We're stuck on the side where the hot sun grinds and the winds blow slow and barely breezy. Catch some fish jumping, cotton picking high at night. Daddy Rich didn't marry Mama good looking. So hush, little baby. No one cares if you cry. Mm. Wow. Tell them the name of your book. And tell them about your radio show. The <laughs> uh, book is called Black and Blue. And um, I do a, um, a, a weekly. Uh, a volunteer weekly uh, conference call in uh, call in program where people call in and I read poetry every Wednesday afternoon oh, to seniors yeah. and or people who are basically shut in who don't get a chance to come to places like visit and hear poetry. Mm -hmm. So I read to them over the phone and and I read you know I've read lots of poems. I have read Ed's poems. I read as a matter of fact I read your poem Glory today. Oh, nice. And um, other read Karen's and. Owens and hey, Garrett. I send you volume. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now, uh, it's Karen. Yes, Karen. Karen about. Melandry Magoon. Me. Karen Melandry Magoon, the clincher, closer, super duper bulldozer. And then we'll take care of these wonderful door prizes. And I have information for you and your friend on these sheets. Earlier. You know, driving. Driving. Yeah. Driving around and around and around. All right, these are just um, impressions. I, I'm, I'm thinking I write in lots of little small moments, and there's no way I would call them minimalist arcanes or something like that. So we're just going to call them impressions. Rain intermission. The rain has stopped for a moment. The sky is gray with hints of blue as evening rounds the march of a rainy day. The air is still almost silent as a quiet city meditates and wraps itself into the quiet night. I wonder sometimes if presidents admired flowers, took walks in the morning, even in the rain, recognized the power of a single petal growing from a lily, 
exuding rich perfumes, falling in grace, touched with velvet, adorned with perfect pearls of rain, washed into a gutter, a little boat of perfection going home. I wonder sometimes if presidents could see the world in the petal of a lily going home. Would it make a difference? A cocky son. The son smiles today a bit cocky. She has smiled all day, daring the orphan clouds to cover her face and veil her sunny disposition. The clouds, intimidated or enchanted, merely gaze adoringly at the sun. Portland in March. Vegetation drinks ravenously from skies spilling rain, gray sodden white ceiling hovers, covers, pines, oaks, budding blossoms, dried remembrances of autumnal decay hang vanquished under damp, dripping limbs, awaiting springtime. A single tulip cowers in the gray morning, hesitantly offering a petal and one more to a gently rising sun. Go into the quiet night, you know. I wanted to see the stars, but they were hidden behind drenched hanging rain clouds. I wanted to see the moon, but she was elusive, coquettishly veiled behind those same soft curtains of mist. I reached up to the sky and flung my net, imagining to catch her mystery at last subsumed in the dark and damp enigma of a heavy night. And now, the last is, thank you, last is just life, a dance. Fragments of a life drink memories, see sounds, feel colors, dream noise, wandering among warriors, dancing ideas. admit I was remiss at the beginning, but I'm not going to remiss because I remember. Um, something that I've been doing, and the people who are new here going, what? Um, I call it Proposition One, and Proposition One is the idea that warfare as we know it, however we might define it, uh, is, is not a good thing, it's wrong, and it should be um, abolished. Now, we can define it various ways, but I think the Nuremberg definitions were pretty good. Mm -hmm. So what I do here, with the hopes of making this something that would spread around the globe at some point, is to ask for an ascension that, yes, we think that the Proposition 1, uh, the, the stop all warfare for whatever reasons, is, is something that we could support. So I'm just, uh, just to yes. raise a hand, just so that we got that, uh, we got one, two, three, uh, 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 Okay, 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 we got, okay, we're close. We're not quite at a hundred percent, but I'm going to put like maybe a, come up with a, I mean, a, a real stop definition. Stop war, 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 I mean, what, stop war, end war. Well, the idea no, is how many people. Like Naomi are, Klein, no, isn't enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, the idea behind this is just eventually to have a a global poll okay. taken that everybody in the world could then say yes, we decided that we don't like that, oh, okay. and the governments okay. yeah. would theoretically then have to, to respond to the people's war. need to do that. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, if Cal will kindly shuffle these cards. When you sign in, you put your name next to a number, and now the door prizes are going to be distributed, whether in authorities permitting. <laughs> Such a great shuffler. He is a very good shuffler. He mumbles, but that's good. So again, we have the college-ruled uh, notebook. Absolutely. Well, it's, I had to take the pages out of it that were used by somebody else, but there are only a few. Then there is this, a completely blank composition book, except for the invisible ink. And Sudden Windows, a, a set of a flash prose by Richard Loringer. As you can see, he called it Sudden, sudden Windows because everything is rectangular in shape, and they're all very short, very nice, very good stuff. This is the, my giveaway copy because I found I had two of them. And then this was given to me today to give away Gertrude Stein's tender button, the corrected centennial edition. So this is not the original, this is the corrected centennial edition. 
And then if you are magnetically inclined, these are small words written upon the magnetic rectangles that you could put on your refrigerator to compose your own words. Now, or, or, or on these. Now, the thing about these was, I, someone gave me the, something just like this, except it was uh, Shakespearean words, and I took them all out and I shuffled them up and I threw them at my refrigerator, and then the plan was to then put them in some kind of order that made some kind of sense. And I actually got three or four poems that were pretty good out of that, and it was like, okay. And, the, and then there's uh, the last word. You, if you come back next week, you have the absolute last word. No one gains says what you say. The co-pilot, like Mr. Hallett, varies what you do here because sometimes I don't know what I do. <laughs> the keynote means you go first and you read somebody else's poem. The mini feature, like Hal did, he's eight, uh, eight minutes in the second half. And then there's the choosing of the next week's theme, not the overall theme, but the And when you do the specific. keynote, you get to come back again. Yes, when you do the keynote, over. you come back in the open because the keynote is somebody else's, and then you get to do yours. Did anybody take on the ecstasy, ever exomescent, whatever um, it was, <laughs> the key word for we the Ecrastic, it. elastic, ecstatic, we did mention that. And what there was mean? one poem that was ecstatic, but they didn't... Uh, in a sense, like, they were all that way. Yeah. Yes. Uh -oh. Well, that's an interesting All right, so now let us let us see here. Do um, you want to flip the first card and recommend one? All right. Uh, we seem to have number 18. Number 18. Number 18 well, that's you, Miss Karen oh, Melander Magoon. Okay. Kindly come forward, come forward. And, and, and take one of these prizes designed with your mind. Matching my mind. age. Turn it around and it's almost there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> Gertrude oh, she goes with Gertrude's side. Very yeah. good. I try to figure out who's going to take what, but I'm all right. Well, Next we have two. Number, number two, two, Ed Mike Hugh. Ed Mike Hugh. He just went out the door. He just went out and the he door. And he left behind these poems too. I okay. will take care of those. Why don't you then. keep it for him? Yes. All right. I took this for the notes that are scrawled in the end. Ah. <laughs> Next is. No, I'm kidding. Number eleven. That Let would be Brett, Mr. Brett Benson. Red. So I've won enough, and I'm not going to be here next week, so I'd like to give mine to Anthony. Oh, there we go. 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 So any of these fine prizes are are, are yours. The uh, sudden win Oh, he goes, you know, okay, yeah. the sudden windows. That's yeah. good. That's good. I, okay, there we go. Now number uh, 17. Number 17, which is Greg Pond. Please. Oh, there he is. Uh, does, uh, uh, too is going to any, uh, either of you want to? Uh, want to come up and? Because he's one? deferring to the new, newer individuals and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, composition books, coffee, or any, any one of those things, if uh, if it suits your mind. That's the good one because it has a lot in it. There we go. Thank you. And another number. How? Oh, right, here we are. Well, uh, depending on how you look at it, this is either a nine oh, no, or a, no, six. No, it's a six. Okay, it's a six. It's yeah. A six. That would be uh, Matt Cook. Matt? Here? Did he I go? Fear not. Is that wrong with the others? We're going to have to go <laughs> on right. to number five. That would be James Conrad. James, all right. You have choices, choices, and more choices. As my mom used to say, choices with your voices. Hmm. Another oh, blank notebook book there. Yeah, yeah the, 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 absolutely you know, blank college rule uh, notebook. I'll give it to this fella. There we go. There we go. Generosity. Now what we have left is the magnetic uh, words oh, to create yeah. poems on your refrigerator. And, and then the keynote mini the keynote, mini yeah, no, 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 no. The offices you can take up here. Number 21. Well, that would be you. Oh. Uh, well, uh, I'm not going to be here next uh, time. I well, think can, I'm going to pass. Can, you can give us a beam. Would you like the Gertrude Stein? Well, no, I have that, I believe. I have that very book. Would you um, care, to care, to care to give us a theme then? Geez, uh, well, seeing as how I won't be here, I uh, don't that doesn't know. That doesn't stop anybody. I don't know if it's fair to assign a theme that I won't have to take the medicine uh, for. No? I, I think I'll just pass. Oh, okay. I may. All right. Uh, All right. But, but let's look and see who's next. How about that? I'll just pass. Oh, good. Pa oh, passing. Yeah. Passing. Men right. must endure their doors. Yeah, well, passing. Uh, uh, All right. Okay, there, there we go. go. Uh, number 15. Number 15, that would be Garrett Murphy. Garrett yeah. Murphy. We got a few things up here. Very hard to do. 
So we have this, or uh, if you're going to be, or you could choose next week's theme, be the co-pilot, keynote, the lead teacher. I don't know if you're going to be here next week, but if you're already piece of things. Or you could just do this. You don't have to be here to do it. Or you could take that. Or you can pass. Or you can pass, which, which some people do. Mini feature. Mini feature? Okay, that means you have you have eight minutes in the second. Garrett Murphy takes the mini. All right, that's going to be great. Number 14. Number 14 is uh, Anthony. Anthony? Hey, there we go. Come on up, there. So, uh, I mean, if you're going to be here next week, well, you can choose the theme for us or do those two if you come back or this. Well, we don't have a theme. Oh, yeah, we do have a theme. Sorry about that. I, I, I meant, I meant, I picked the wrong one. Doggone it. I know. That means you're, you're, you, no one comes after you. With whoever, however it is, we put you in a place so that no one comes after you and you get the last word. That's all that is. It's another way of saying, you know, I'm going to finish it. So you're, the, you're, the, you're the closer. But then there's this, or, or these two things. Uh, the keynote means you speak first. And then you come back on the open. Co-pilot means you help out here, and then the last word is the last word. Okay, so let me. So let me. So wait a minute. You're. Is that a new one? The co-pilot. You did that last. Yeah, yeah. No, the co-pilot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Anthony, right? Okay. Anthony. And Anthony, like the last name is like it looks like J, right? Yeah. Okay, Anthony J. All right. Next week, you're you're up first. You read a poem that you like by somebody else, and then you come back on the Number sixteen. Number sixteen. Oh, you dropped my glasses one last time. Sixteen. Oh, there's a blank for sixteen. Never mind. A blank. Yeah. Well, how about number thirteen? That would be Andrew W. Ah, see, so uh, so you got the coffee or the co-pilot or last word, whichever you want. Do you want to be the last word? So I'm going to put you um, right. So Andrew, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So this means wherever we end, you get the final word. So wherever that is, that's where you are. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. And Andrew, what's you have a last in Andrew W. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll just put it on there. All right. I want to make sure you can have get things. Wrong. One more card, and yes. that's all that she wrote. So this card is number four. That would be Owen Dunkel. All right. And uh, we got the coffee uh, cards or the co-pilot. Co-pilot or the coffee. Coffee. Yeah, all right. You get those magnetic <laughs> thing words. Oh. You can okay.